What's up, Jose? What's up, buddy? Two weeks in a row, our New yeah, Year's resolution of doing podcasts. <clears throat> so listen, what what did you do today? Got my ass kicked by you in a back workout. <laughs> How'd it go? Brutal. I haven't trained at that pace. I, it, it's hard to describe for uh, people who haven't gone. Anyone who, who watches this, who, who's ever trained with you will get it. But if you haven't trained with you, it's the pace that you go at. It's certainly you hit muscle failure and we're training hard and we're training heavy. We rode the 150s today for one arm rows. But it's the lack of rest and the supersetting or, um, you know, rows, 12, one arm, 12, the other, 10, one arm, 10, no breaks, that you just get so gassed. You just can't catch your breath. Yeah, you uh, you had an anxiety attack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On those rows, so, I, I couldn't breathe. Anyone out there who's ever had, in my entire life of training, it happened to me once when we were doing hack squats. You remember that? Yeah. And I felt like it was because I had the belt on cinched up tight and we were just doing so much volume, drop set, drop set. And then I got to a set where I was like hyperventilating so much. I couldn't catch my breath. And I'm like, dude, I I'm tapping out. I had to like stop for a minute and just catch myself. And that only happened to me once in my entire life. And it happened to you today. Yeah. I think this was, was the second time. There was one time we trained legs at Impact Fitness with that. I think it's called like a bear squat. Yeah. Remember where you put your legs slightly in front, the pads on there. And we were going like a stupid drop set, seven plates aside for 10 or two, I think 12 reps to, to five plates to three plates. And the yeah. seven was all I had, right? Like failure on the last rep. You're not breathing well when you're doing that. You rip the two plates off each side, go. And, and I couldn't breathe, right? And I'm starting another hard set and my legs are shaking. And it was like yeah. full panic attack. We have, I think it was one of our videos, Legs at Impact. And then today, yeah, today on the rows, it was, I think, just getting to the, it was 12 reps, 12 reps, right to 10 reps, 10 reps, same weight, 100 pound dumbbell. And then it was eight reps, eight reps. And right on that eight, I was trying to row and it was like my body was shutting down. Like it yeah. wasn't that a, like the weight just got too heavy. It was, I had no air coming in. Right? I was like hyperventilating. Yeah. And you just, you know, what it reminds me of is when you're a kid playing sports, you know, soccer, whatever, you do those dashes back and forth, back and forth. And then it catches up to you. Right. Yeah, and yeah. like, and you're just completely winded and you have to like walk with your arms up over your head and just to try to slow everything down. That's kind of what it felt like. Yeah, that was funny. You did great though. That was a great pump. Your back's going to be sore no matter what. Yeah, no, no this is, we're, we're getting the band back together as I start yeah, to train yeah. for a pro show. I'm going to get back training with you each week. Uh, much needed. You know, like I was telling you, I've been training heavy. Like I'll chest press the one fifties, I'll row the one fifties, but there's like three minutes of rest in between, you know, and, and yeah, yeah. I'm not doing all of the extra stuff that you're having me do. And yeah. I can see the difference in my physique. Like I'm, I'm big. I'm still, it was 132 this morning and you know, I still carry some size, but I don't have any of the detail that I had when I was training with you regularly from all of this stuff. Yeah. No, you will. You'll be. We'll get back in it. We'll start recording them too and posting them up here. Yeah, so, so people, people can get a chance to see what what this stuff is. Because it's anytime I I was just describing it to someone in the gym. I walked through there a few minutes ago and they were like, "Dude, are you okay?" And I was like, "I just trained with Jose. You know, just out of it." It's like, "Don't I even want to talk to you right now." Yeah. And like, what do you mean? Do you guys train legs? And I was like, "No, back." And they're like, "Back." It was like the reaction you'd have after a hard leg day. And then, you know, this yeah, guy was like, yeah. it's a back workout. You do some, some lap pull down, some rows. Like, How hard can it be? I'm like, oh, it was hard. Yeah. yeah. No, back is equally as hard as legs. I, don't, yeah. I mean, legs can be worse because of the amount of blood down there. But um, <clears throat> back is, is really rough, especially when you're doing those rows. One arm rows suck the life out of you because you, you're going all you can on one side and then doing it again. 
Yeah. It's um, it's kind of like doing heavy lunges. You know, you got to do one leg and then the other. You smoked. You know, what was good is like, you know, because I have access to the awesome equipment in this gym, sometimes I get a little too used to it. It's it's kind of easy, right? Like uh, instead of one arm rows, I'll do the flex leverage row, which hits close, right? Your, your yeah. row in there. And it's kind of lazy of me to just throw some plates on there. I'm right in the position. And uh, it's certainly easier than having to swing 150s around, you know, with, with yeah. what that, the strain that puts on your body. So I've been avoiding the one arm rows. I'm like, oh, I'll just do the flex leverage. Puts me right in there. You know, I hit it. I connect. But it was good. We did a lot of stuff today that, that I haven't done in a while. Dumbbell pullovers. Yeah. Yeah. I've been yeah. doing the Nautilus pullover machine. But I haven't done dumbbell pullovers in a year. Yeah. Dumbbell pullovers was a staple in my training. Always. I mean, dumbbells, barbells, uh, you know, free weight stuff was always the main meat and potatoes of my workouts. And I used the machines later on in my career as injuries started compiling, um, made it, as you said, a little easier. But, um, you know, what once you say is like in this year of training in this gym with with these machines where everything feels great is, you know, I've been able to get stronger at them, but I'm, you know, knock on wood, injury free, right? Like my my lower back's great. You know, when we first started, my lower back was junk. I was so limited yeah. in what we could do, you know. So that's been the great thing is I've been able to progress every body part on every lift because of these machines. But there, that's no reason to not you know, do those heavy rows, the, the pullovers, all of the dumbbell stuff, because they certainly have value. Yeah. You will grow by doing the hard stuff. Yeah. That's it. So listen, I want to talk about the Arnold classic. This is the clusterfuck. I, I, I don't know what to even say or where to begin, but something has to change in the mindset of modern day bodybuilders. Like um, everyone is like, taking time off and resting. Now, I understand this was a weird year. The Olympia's later in the year. It's in December. It was a long year. But you're a professional bodybuilder. Your job is to compete. Um, now, some of these guys who might have health issues that we don't know about, um, fine. But, you know, you can't tell me that everyone in the top 20 Olympians has health issues or something. If so, then there's a bigger problem out there. Um, what the hell is going on? How do you have six guys for the Arnold Classic? This is crazy. So I, I, I really... Wonder, well, we don't know. I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think every division they picked eight athletes, like which is the smallest number it's ever been to start with, right? I think it's always been at least 12 What's what's your recollection? I mean, obviously, at least for 212, I feel like at least they started with 12 guys and then people always fall off, right? For one reason or another, somebody drops out and, and two or three people drop out. So you start at 12, say, for men's open. By the day of the show, there's nine people, you know, something like that. So this yeah. year, they started at eight. And the first day I saw that list, when they started saying, here's the bikini girls, here's eight, here's classic physique, here's the eight and open first thing I said to myself was there's going to be one call out at the show right like, like some pe one person's going to drop off out of the state and it took like three days for Charles Griffin to say oh man like I put my name in this a while ago I apologize for not communicating to the Arnold but I, I don't plan on doing the show anymore you know uh, so what I wonder is did they set this cap at eight and maybe Antoine wanted to do it or um, Michael Crizzo, or, you know, like, were there a bunch of other names that put their their name in to do it? And the Arnold committee were like, you know, not big names, right? Obviously not, not the top six guys, not Brandon Curry, not Big Rami. Yeah. But like you said, the back 10 through 20, you know, those placings, did those guys put their names in and they weren't selected? And, you know, it's a huge problem picking only eight people, especially in open, right? Because they're just bikini, whatever, everyone's going to show up every time. Those girls can, can yeah. do 10 shows a year. But when you talk about open, 
guys fall off things go wrong you know when when you're dealing yeah. with all of the things that go into those guys doing a show yeah yeah i i mean if they only picked eight then then i uh understand it a little better but that's still a low number and you you kind of have to um plan for one or two to drop off yeah but only having six guys so what are they gonna have two call outs of three yeah that's crazy to me I, if i were uh, um nick walker or or derek lunsford i would reconsider there's no way they're fat by now and they have six weeks or seven weeks to prepare and get ready they don't have to do anything crazy. They're already top of the heap. Just come in, come in shape. I mean, they're not out of shape. There's no way they got fat in, in two, two, three weeks, whatever. Um, I just don't understand it. I mean, back in the 90s, you had guys like Milos. I think he said he did 20 shows in a year. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I, I just don't understand why everyone is taking so much time off I know, Why Nick, so at great. least I, I watched his podcast with with guy and he addressed it of basically he needs he just mentally needs time off he said mm -hmm. the previous year when he did the olympia into the arnold he said that's where everything went wrong that he just was burnt out but he pushed through and he became like a really ugly person just from being so miserable, like not wanting to do it. And that's when all of those issues happen with sponsors and everything. How else. did he play? He won. He won. Right. Yep. Well, there you go. Actually, no, that was, yeah, because that was the year he was talking about the year that he did it, right? The year that he did it, he won, right? Last year, yeah. he didn't do it. It was the previous year, right? From the Arnold. And um, yeah, last year he skipped it, right? But the year that he did it, he won. Yeah. And last year it was Brandon winning with with um, what's his name uh, Bonac second. Yeah. So, but he said on on Guy's podcast that he's really burnt out right now, and he just moved to Vegas, and he just wants to do stuff with his girlfriend and have some time off, and you know, and, and be able to regroup and and just do the Olympia. But he basically said he's not mentally in a place where he could do the Arnold. That it would just start him off at the wrong place for the year uh Derek I don't know you know I, obviously I it, it's got to be tough when you're so close like Derek to winning the Olympia to not want to get back to work and just focus on improvements it would be a huge feather in his cap though and a huge payday 200 yeah. grand I'm hearing that's what yep. but it's up to 200 grand the Arnold yes how do you turn that down I know you know, I think people need to remember there's not a lot of money in bodybuilding. You know, that right. it's that's you know, when every other pro show out there under the Olympia and the Arnold has 10 grand for first place, if that. You know, like every other right. pro show, 10, 10 grand. Right. So how do you not have like a Hunter Labrada doing it, who is seventh, right? Yeah. It's it's he could be in the mix of of I read something today where he just basically said, I'm really disappointed. I've been off all social media. That was an embarrassment that I didn't make first call out. I'm so pissed at myself. And that we got our peak wrong that, you know, they, they messed up the peak. Right. So it's like, look, if, if you think you were in shape and you just screwed up the peak, there you go. Yeah. You know, and theoretically he should be able to beat everybody there. Yeah. Go peak again. Yep. Yeah gives you another shot while you're still in shape and with the prize of winning 200 grand and talk about some momentum going into the next olympia by winning the arnold yeah and here's the thing people you know they think they're gonna last forever it's these careers are so short and they seem to be getting shorter it's um you gotta strike while you can and compete while you can because a catastrophic injury is right around the corner. You know, a pec tear, a hamstring tear, a, you know, joint problems. I would, man, 
Uh, you know, I, I can only speak for myself and I absolutely loved the opportunity to compete. The fact that I could do, I mean, back when I was competing, the Olympia was in September. So it was a little different. You know, I would have eight weeks to relax a little bit and then gear up for the, the Arnold. But even if it wasn't, and I saw this list where I'm like, you know, I'm top three at the Olympia and nobody in the top three is doing the show, I would want that payday. I would yeah. do it no, no matter what. So are, are you guessing at this point, but whether it's competitors seeing it, doing exactly what you just said, seeing there's six guys, you know, and I've got a shot to get some type of payday. Say you don't win it, right? What's second place? A hundred grand? You know, what's third yeah. place? I, I don't know, right? 50, 70 grand, right? Some serious money. And there's six guys right now. So if you're, you know, a somewhat top guy, top 15 in the world, you've got a good shot of making that top five. And yeah. And a serious payday, right? Like I'm guessing third and fourth place still pays more than winning any other pro show. Absolutely. Right? I'm so, pretty sure. Did, didn't Ian place third last year? Or was he second? At the Arnold? Yeah, to Nick. Oh, that was the previous year. I feel like, I'm trying oh. to remember, I feel like he was third. That feels like forever ago. Two Arnolds ago. So I don't think was, he was second. I'm trying to remember who was. Who I just remember Nick winning. I'm going to look that up. Um because I'm, I'm pretty sure Ian got paid 75 grand. Yeah, that's the, it should be the 2021 Arnold. Let me see. 2021. So do, do you think at this point, the Arnold is going to go out and say, like, we can't have a show with six guys, you know, even I already bought my tickets for it. it it's, it's already feeling a little lackluster, right? Of that you have a two, three man call outs at this point. You know, or just one six person call out and they just move move all the guys around. So do you think okay, the Arnold so, has to fill these spaces in? Uh, I don't think they have to do anything, but um I think it's very disappointing that they didn't get a um a whole host of people wanting to do the show. See, I'm kind of speaking without knowledge when it comes yeah, to that. right. We don't, I know, don't know, did people not want to do it? Or did they have 15, 20 guys who applied and their game, look, every other division, I'm pretty sure is eight competitors. So I think that's what they decided going into this year is eight competitors per division. Right. So we don't know how many people actually applied and maybe that will come out in the next week of, of an Antoine or whoever that said, hey man, I put my name in, I didn't get it. Um, yeah. You know, so that we don't know, right? I, I, my guess is because there's, from what I recall, eight people in every division, that's the number that they set. And there has to be tons of people that applied, you know, certainly for classic, for bikini that didn't yeah. get in. And you have to kind of assume for open bodybuilding as well. You know, I doubt that it was just, eight. now it'd be one thing if it was like eight in the open and bikini has 13 people and classic has 17 people, right? You'd like, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's eight guys for everything. So that tells me that that's the number that they set on, um, which is dangerous. You know, <laughs> that's, it's, I would say, you know, if I'm running it, get 12 guys because you're going to lose potentially one or two. Yeah. Are they having men's physique? Yes. They are. Yes. Are they so having it's, it's, women's physique? I don't know. I, I think. I could be wrong, but I believe the only two women's divisions are bikini and wellness. I think they got rid of figure and physique. Wow. Um, maybe crazy. fitness. I'd have to see. Let me let me check as we play on our phones on this thing. Because um, the Arnold had the uh, the lists of everybody. Arnold Sports Festival. All right. So they've got. Yep. They've got. So looking at the pictures it's wellness um fitness and bikini and then men's physique classic physique and open bodybuilding 
and then wheelchair as well. Uh, yeah, three divisions so for women and then four divisions for men counting wheelchair. So no figure. Yeah. It's it's just kind of disappointing. Um they seem to be streamlining it, right? Like they're clearly trying to um streamline this thing and cut back expenses, both in eliminating divisions every year, 212, yeah. you know, 2018, the last year you did it to yeah. I think figure this is the first year without figure I believe because I think they had figure last year and then now the number of people getting cut down right which is is has to be trying to save money because you've got to fly everyone in put them up give them the stipend all that stuff yeah oh man if I were Derek I would be so flying high from that second place in the Olympia that I would want to come do this. It's an easy so way. Bad. It's, you know, it, it's, we know him working with Hani, they can nail it. You know, at least of what we saw at the Olympic, even if he's 10%, 15% off, I think he still wins the show. Well, I mean, yeah. His you know, structure alone other than is going to put Samson, but we, I don't, I don't know. My guess is, we're going to get the same Samson that was at the Olympia, which was incredible. But unless Milos can somehow figure out how to get him drier and harder, you know, which is, is all that he's missing, which is possible, you know, for, for them to push for these next six weeks and, and uh, peel him down even more. But that, that would be the one wild card, right? It, can Samson come in 10 pounds lighter? At, at you know what he was he two two ninety five at the Olympia come in at two eighty five at the Arnold then maybe he gives Derek a run if Derek was doing it. So who but, who do you have? And who's your top six? Oof, yeah, I know, right? you know <laughs> of <laughs> of everybody there. So actually, we we got to highlight something really cool, right? We're we're kind of shitting on the Arnold right now and all of the Open. We do have to highlight that we have Kamal and Clarita doing it, which is really badass to see. You know, yeah. and, and um, it's going to be really interesting to see how Clarita does in, in this thing. You know, obviously he's won a pro show. Um, he beat what Sergio and Regan. Yeah. Did he beat Kuklo as well, or, or am I? No. He wasn't okay. in the show. Okay. No. Uh, but, but you know, it, now he's I wouldn't be surprised. Samson. I wouldn't be surprised if Sean wins. That would be huge. He just had a baby. Yep. He needs that money. Yep. 200 grand, Sean. Yeah. I'm pulling for him. That's who I'm rooting for. Yep. Definitely. I um, think him and Samson. You know, there's... Um, imagine him, that. What's, what's Samson's got to be over a foot taller than him. I know, <laughs> I know it's going to be like Brian Shaw next to him at, at the uh, the placings. Um kind of jumping around here but you know obviously kind of a wild card that could win it or if it's anything like the olympia is going to be third or fourth is bonak what do you think went right like we i saw him at the arnold and then obviously the boston pro you saw him at the boston pro and he was insane you know to the point that yeah. we're saying he should be top six for at the olympia and he came out and it just wasn't the same look can they fix I had, that? I had him picked for second place at this Olympia. I had him, I had Romney winning, him in second, Hottie in third. Um, and I was way off. Um, if he looked the way he did at the Boston Pro, I think he would have been in the fight to win. He was fuller. He it made everything stick out. You know, I I don't know. I think maybe they panicked at the end, like thinking he wasn't like on time and maybe tried to suck him down a little bit too much at the end, which flattened him out. And this guy needs to be full, crazy full to, to look like the physique we're used to seeing. And he just didn't have that look. Even his chest, which is arguably his best body part of crazy striated round his chest was a little flat you know and his legs seemed a little down 
and, and uh, supposedly they were on their way back. If you look at the picture of Bonac guest posing like a month out from the show, he looked awesome. He was bubbly, huge. And that wasn't the look they brought to the stage. So I don't know what they did. And I, I don't want to speculate and say, you know, diuretics or anything like that. I don't know. But whatever it was, I think they pulled him down too far. That's the only thing I can come up with is he just wasn't full and round, you know, for pound for pound, I would think he is a lot bigger than Derek. He's not as wide as Derek, right. but thicker. And on stage, it wasn't close. No, like right. Derek blew him away. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of a weird thing. Um, and I think he still has time to, to make those adjustments and just be fuller and, and make an impact here um, or, or even win. Um, I don't know. What did he place ninth at the Olympia? Yeah. That's just crazy. Yeah. You know, where uh, he arguably could have won the Arnold earlier in the year. Right. So I, I don't know. I would just think that he was flat, not full enough. Um, yeah, that's going to be exciting to see Samson next to Clarita. Now, Clarita, if, if Samson is not at 100%, then Clarita will really expose him because Sean will come in shape. Yep. I mean, that kid could do 15 shows a year and he's going to come in shape. Yep. So, you know what? I can see Sean winning this. I really can. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, it, it's it's just cool in that, you know, certainly the 212 got disrespected when they dropped it. You know, and what was their story? There, not enough people want to do it or something like that, right? Which yeah. wasn't the case. There, there was always a good turnout of basically everybody but Flex Lewis, you know, who was, right. was doing the show. Um, so how cool would that be if a 212 guy comes in and wins wins the Open? Yeah. Well, how cool is it that three of the six names on this list are former 212 or current 212 yeah, guys? Two, yeah, two of them certainly are current, right? And Bonac was a Bonac former. Was. Yeah. That's, that that says up, a yeah. lot. I'm going to pull up the list again right now. Um, it's Samson, Florida, um, um, Akeem Williams. Bonac, Kamal, and Justin Rodriguez. Justin Rodriguez. Yep. Yeah. All right. What's your, uh, where are we, six weeks out at this point? Uh, yeah. Five and a half weeks out, something like that. Uh, yeah. Let's let's get an early prediction right now, five and a half weeks out, assuming obviously they're not going to add anybody else in. We got top six here. I'm going to say Clarita. Bonac, Samson, um, Akeem. Kamal, Kamal and Justin. Yep. Kamal, Akeem, Justin. Yeah. Yeah. Where did um, right. where did Akeem place in the Olympia? I have no memory of him in the show. No, not good. I don't think he was top 12. Okay. Yeah, it definitely wasn't. No. He wasn't even top 15, I think. Yeah, it wasn't good. Maybe he can... Um, Do you... I, I honestly don't even remember him from the show. Was he just soft? Was he watery? Like, I have no recollection of even what he looked like. Yeah, I mean, he was huge, but he was particularly soft from behind. Yeah. Just wasn't, you know, close. So, uh, you know, he's got time to, to do it. Hopefully he kept going with the intentions of doing the Arnold. Yeah. He's a guy that could conceivably come in and win. Yeah. If right. he's peeled. Yep. But, you know, he's going to have to go back to the drawing board of what he wants to do. You know, you like can't you just know, come in huge. Clarita's going to nail it. Kamal's going to nail it. Those guys are, you know, within 5% every show, right? Like maybe Kamal, you could say he could have been a little fuller, but he's, always shredded um yeah at this point like 
we can assume um, Samson. I think Bo, Bo, I think Bonac will nail his condition. It's yeah. just a matter of is he going to be full? Right. right. Um, Samson's kind of a wild card. He's gotten better each time, yep. but still, if, if he's going to stand next to those guys, he can be exposed. You know, condition yep. wise. I mean, I mean he's, on paper, he's the guy. You know, if you're judging by the Olympia. He's the guy to win this on paper. Yeah. Right. Short of, of Clarita. But if you're, you know, uh, discounting the 212 a little bit just because of, you know, the, the height on there and how tall and big Samson is, Samson should be the favorite going into this as, as the highest ranked guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I'm, I, I'm not sold that he can, uh, I mean, well, here's the thing. Would Clarita have been top six in the Open Olympia? Probably not. Right. But but when you compare them, at pose for pose, condition, if, if Samson is in 1% better condition than he was at the Olympia, then he'll win. Yeah. But if he's even 1% less, Clarita will beat him. Yeah, that's the cool thing about if if this is a small lineup at six guys, maybe they they find two more people to throw in last minute, um, and it's eight guys. Is Clarita is going to get the look? He's going to get compared, which will be really fun again, right? Because we had that at what was it the Legion show he did? Is that the show yeah. that he won? Yeah, is yeah. you know there was a lot of like. What is what is he going to look like up there, especially with really tall, big guys like Regan and Sergio? And he wins, you know. So that that part's going to be really, really fun because he'll get the look. They they got nothing to do if there's six guys, then compare and move everybody in the middle and everybody stand next to everybody, right? Because what are you going to do otherwise? Op- men's open bodybuilding is is done in eight minutes if they don't do that. Yeah. No, my pick is Clarita. Any way you slice it. He's at his peak. He's at his best. It's not difficult for him to turn around and come back in seven weeks and be spot on. And he's really tough to beat. He's he's complete. He's symmetrical, balanced, condition. And if bodybuilding is judged the way it should be, it's not a height contest, then I think he can win without a doubt. Yeah, I agree. And it's just one of those feel-good stories. The judges will put him in the middle. He's going to be in the middle somehow. Yeah. You know, he'll take turns flip-flopping with Bonac and and, uh, and, and Samson. Yeah. And they're going to give it to him. Because, he's you know, he's better put together than Bonac. And he's going to be better conditioned than Samson. And for their frames, you could argue Clarita has a better back than Samson, you know, for his frame. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, it's I not agree. bigger. It's not taking right. up more space. But yeah. for his little frame, um, that's going to be interesting. There's certainly but, um, more detail just because of Clarita always nailing his conditioning. Right. Right. That's exactly where I'm going with that. Yeah. So, all right. I'm going to uh, head back to work and... Uh, we will check in in a few days with some, uh, I got a, a video that's going to be posted from the Olympia of uh, the, the, the whole week, uh, weekend. And um, that should be interesting. And we're going to film the next workout. That's what we should do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, yeah. I got this one out of the way. So you don't have that embarrassment. Hopefully my endurance will be a little better for the next one. Yeah. And for the people that have been writing in, um, write in some questions. If if you have any questions that you want us to cover, uh, any questions for me personally, for Nate personally, um, training questions or or any, uh, anything you want us to cover, let us know in the comments. Yep, exactly. And subscribe, share this if you can, it'll just give us motivation to keep, keep going with this. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, yeah, if there's uh, any topics you want us to cover, because right now the hottest topic is what the hell's going on with the Arnold. Right, right. 
you know, he's putting the show on, he's putting big cash money. Uh, we can't blame him. So um, the athletes got to show up. Yep, I agree. All right, sounds good, Jose. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. All right, take care.